Hey, thank you so much for joining us online today. We believe that God wants to use this message to speak directly to you. So as you listen, we want to encourage you, have an open mind and an open heart to hear what God's speaking to you. As well, you can access all the sermon notes from this message on our website and on our church app. It's so good to be with you today and to have you back. I thought maybe today was going to be another rain day, but God had other plans. I get so moved when I, when I see people getting baptized, following the Lord and, and taking those next steps in, in faith. And it just seems to, you know, our logo is made up of ripples and waves. And I said, Lord, please. Let our legacy be a life that honors you in every way, but a life that is not an end in itself, a movement in itself, a church in itself. I went, Lord, may Lakeshore continually bring life till Jesus comes again to influence, to impact, to make a difference, uh, to create influence. I'm always amazed at the movement of God among his people, his activity in our hearts and lives. And I'm especially amazed when you see miracles break out and the only way you can attribute what happened would be to the glory of God. God did that. He did that for me yesterday. and He did it uh, a couple days before. And sometimes you have to really tune your senses, though, to see it. Because we live in a physical world. We have a physical body. We have mind and intellect and emotion that can get in the way of this quite a bit. But you have a spirit, which is the better part of you. It is you, your spirit. And when you're you give your life to Jesus, your spirit is saved immediately. The physical body that we have, well, the Bible declares that that will be saved ultimately. We get a new body, thank you Jesus. I'm appreciating that more and more every year. But your soul is redeemed progressively, it's called sanctification, it's a religious term that means we are to grow in our relationship with Jesus to look more like him every day. And you can't do that without the power of the Holy Spirit. So in this series, we've talked about hearing God's voice, knowing God's will. Uh, Mitchell gave a great message last week on uh, knowing kind of which way to turn and how to navigate God's will in your life. But today I'm going to be talking about the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now this could be a year-long teaching. I love it. it uh, teaching on the Holy Spirit is my favorite topic because it's so very personal to me and it's so very powerful to a church body. Nothing will change a marriage like the infusion of the Holy Spirit in both your lives. A family will reap the benefits of that. And nothing impacts the world like the movement of the Holy Spirit among college students or high schoolers or junior hires or senior adults. It just, it, that's how it happens. And there are pockets of revival all around us. I noticed the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, they're, they're experiencing revival right now. People being baptized all over the place. Just here recently at Lake Point, they had just a mass number of people following the Lord in baptism, almost 800. 
And I thought, God, <laughs> you are doing something in our midst, in our hearts, in this community, and in our world. So we choose to keep our eyes on you. By nature, I have a tendency to be a little cynical and negative. And so I have to transform the Eeyore into a Tigger. <laughs> and just do the bouncy, flouncy, trouncy rather than staying in the doldrums. If I watch the news, it can have an effect on my emotions. And so I choose to stay in the Word of God more than the TV to keep my heart and my mind aligned with God's truth for my life. And it's probably not just me. But in the teaching today that we're gonna be looking at the book of Galatians in regard to following the leading of the Holy Spirit. So if you'll look in Galatians 5, 16, Paul is saying, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Well, duh. <laughs> I mean, if you're eating carrots, you're not eating Oreos. But this is so powerful. How do you not do this? You do this. You let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Now, I, I realize, how do you walk in the Spirit? What, what, what do you do? What does that look like, making decisions, everyday life, driving, coming home, washing dishes, doing the laundry? What does that look like to let the Holy Spirit guide your life? So I wanna give you something practical today, something that you can use on Monday and the rest of the week. So. Let's look at the next verse. The sinful nature, it wants to do what? Its own thing. Not trust in the Lord, not rely on him, but to be independent. Do its own thing, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly, they're at odds, they're at war with one another. Uh, so, so that you're not free to carry out your good intentions. And that's why just having good intentions will never ever bring you into the ultimate life God has for you. That there is a war going on. And in order to walk in the spirit, live in the spirit, follow the leading of the spirit, it requires tuning your life to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, Galatians 5.24 says this, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. This, this is so beautiful because it's just not the penalty of sin that we have been forgiven of. But we have, because of the cross, we can overcome the power of sin. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And so we can do this in our business, in the classroom, with our neighbors, our family, uh, hobbies and quiet time. You can do this in every area of your life. But first of all, I, I wanna look at this. Who is the Holy Spirit? Again, this is for another series that is on its way. But I do wanna say the Holy Spirit, he is a person. There is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Well, what is the name of the Holy Spirit? Yes. <laughs> Holy Spirit. It's holy, it's a spirit. God the Father, he's in heaven. Jesus at his right hand, making intercession for us. But when the Spirit was sent, 
those flames lit upon those in the upper room. Each of them got a fire. Each of them received an overflowing, empowering presence of God in their lives. And it's available to all of us. Look at this. Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. So it's, it's, the, it's the, the advocate, counselor, comforter, someone to come alongside you and, and to help you. It's, it's so important to have the advocate in your life. It was some time back we were having a homegoing service here at Lakeshore. I didn't know the person, but I thought, well, I'll just jump on their Facebook and uh, kind of find out their interest and so forth. So I did. But as I was sharing, I realized I'd, I'd missed some very important information. And uh, someone hollers from the back, what about? I said, I'm sorry, uh, uh, who? His fiance. And I thought, I've looked at 30 pictures of dogs, 20 pictures of his, his family that I knew, uh, lots of water and outdoor cooking, no fiance. So I knew something was afoot, I felt it. I felt the Holy Spirit saying, Brad, you've messed up. I looked down, I looked over, I apologized to the young lady sitting on the front. But I realized there are some people very upset right now. And so at the close, I landed the plane pretty quickly and I moved myself over here and I stood about there because I realized there's tension between the two families. Some of the big guys over here got up, started whispering, and I uh, realized there's children here, and I, I thought this could end so badly. Pastor Brad Howard at Lakeshore Church lived a good life. <laughs> and I was praying. I said, Lord, would you help in this situation? Could you, I, you could cut the tension with a knife. And I look up. <laughs> And one of my team members is like bounding in my direction. You could tell, <laughs> Superman, come to save the day. Caleb Faber, my Caleb. He said, I got your back. I thought we're gonna get beat up so bad. <laughs> But to have someone in, in a moment of tension and crisis that would come up and say, I got your back. I can't begin to tell you just how it made me so proud. And then another staff member came. And then another staff member let me know they were around the corner. And I thought, we're gonna be all right here. Lord, bring peace to this scenario. Thank you, Nick for all you did, but life can get out of hand so easily, can't it? Oh, especially when we're dealing with family, emotions. But the power of the Holy Spirit can bring peace in the worst of situations. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I told you. Thank the Lord. You say, well, I'm gonna use that during my exams. Just remember, it's gotta be in you for it to be reminded to you. So, so, who is the Holy Spirit? Well, he's a person, but he can also be grieved. In other words, he has emotions. Do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. And it does. Here he is making himself available to you, to be beside you, 
parakletos, literally means the one to walk beside you. Peter said to Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit and you kept some of the money for yourself. Again, this was a bad move on Ananias' part. Uh, Peter knew what was going on, called it out, but it grieved the spirit and the ending wasn't good. But also, he can be grieved. He is a person, but he can be resisted. You stubborn people. Now this is Stephen, this is right before he's about to be stoned and he's talking to the religious leaders that are mad because Stephen has been proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ and the, the Jewish church leaders hated it. So again, he knows he's about to die. You stubborn people, you are heathen at heart. No offense to anyone from Heath. <laughs> you are heathen at heart deaf to the truth, must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? That's what your ancestors did, and so do you. I don't wanna be counted in with that group that are constantly resisting the activity, the work, the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life. In other words, times that you know that you know that you know God was moving you and you said no. Resisted the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm gonna share with you just in closing seven or five ways to recognize the Holy Spirit's leading. Number one is this, uh, just uh, intuition. Mothers in particular have this gift. They know stuff here that was never told them here. They know things, children can attest to this. It's absolutely amazing their ability to know the unknown. Who gives intuition to the heart and instinct to the mind? Well, of course, that's God that does that. And then there's this compelling, uh, just moved in your soul, uh, a compelling of heart. And the, the Bible uses the term to bind. I was bound in the spirit. In other words, wrapped up with this conviction God is moving me somewhere. Almost something that you can't break free from. You're compelled. An internal motivation, like a prompting, that drives us forward in obedience to God. And now compelled by the Spirit, Paul said, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. But he did say, yet in, in every city I go to, there's gonna be imprisonment and hardship. And you think, why go? Because it was his calling. This is what he said. He said, because I want to finish the course. I want to fulfill the calling on my life that is to preach the grace of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's there for. Then there are times you get a, a check in your spirit. A feeling of just restraint gnawing discomfort you can't explain, the feeling that something's not right. This lack of peace, it, it really should be a brake pedal uh, with your spirit. You say, well, Brad, I thought you weren't supposed to follow your feelings. That's very true. However, you're, it, it's like a gut check. You get this thing in your spirit and you just can't resolve it. In other words, there's no peace on the back end of it. And in times like this, uh, I say it this way, when in doubt, don't. And then there's the peace. When you have peace, a restful feeling, a, a sense of release, quiet assurance, a deep sense of security, and this might be described as a green light in your spirit, not always. Because even with these, you need another check. Uh, here's one more let me give you. And this, this one may surprise you. Settle peace, but also um, let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, Colossians 3.15. Here's one, godly desires. 
because God replaces the old with the new, with new desires. And so the activity of the Holy Spirit in your life, he will shift you out of one world and bring you into another world. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Well, I've always thought, delight yourself in the Lord, he's gonna give me everything I want. No, he'll give you the desires. In other words, I'm gonna put desire in your heart. I'm gonna give you a desire to fulfill this. I'm, I'm gonna give you a desire, uh, Don and Becky, for the mission field, to do a great work there, to raise up disciples. I'm gonna change things. I'm taking you out of the pharmacy world and I'm taking you into the field of true life change. Change, a new desire out of one into an a small group idea, a new desire in your heart to shift out of the old and into the new. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. What a great verse. And then here's the final check with this. In the leading of the spirit, how are ways that I can know for sure? So whatever decision is that you need to make, whether it's a, a, a purchase decision, maybe it's a marriage decision, possibly a family scenario, something God is doing, you have to make a call on that. Here's the final check. Have I prayed about this? Pray first, not last. God, would you show me open my eyes. In fact, there's a prayer I'm gonna pray over you before you leave today. Two, does it align with the word of God? Anything inconsistent with the word of God should be off, off the table. Does it agree with spiritual counsel? There's a reason why children, God gave you parents. Uh, parents, there's a reason why God Put spiritual advisors around you, mentors, coaches, bosses, leaders. Is this in keeping uh, with the alignment of my life? Do they agree? And then last, does it move me closer to Jesus? So again, past feelings, does it make me more like Jesus in what I do? Yesterday, yeah, my wife is out of town. Hi, sweetheart. I know you're watching the service, and uh, I miss you already. And, and, and I know the whole cooking senior dinner thing, that was kind of a, it was supposed to be on Friday. It's going to be Sunday night. You're not going to be with me. And it went from like 9 to 30-something. That's okay. That's okay. Have fun with your sisters in Knoxville. I got it covered. So yesterday, I was, uh, I had a list. If I go to this store, this store, this store, this store, and it just got confused. I meant to go here, but I ended up walking here. And I'm, uh, I'm walking around with my cart at Aldi. And Lauren, I run into your brother, Steve. I look down, Steve has nothing in his cart. I don't know what's going on there other than maybe he just enjoys walking around Aldi, but he had nothing in his cart. And he said, hey, could we, could we pray together for my family? I said, yes, of course. So we went inside the store because it was hot outside and we just took a moment to grab hold of God and to seek him for healing for your mama, for Mary. All the situation, reconciliation for the family, all those in Texas, Alabama, all over. Right in the middle of Aldi. Everyone could hear us pray, but we weren't being obnoxious, I don't think. You see, I could have very easily been at another store. 
and I could have said, oh, Brad, you're so stupid. Had you gone this way, you would have saved a couple minutes. Well, sometimes God's just trying to save a life. And it could be that he wants to use you in that moment. And I did, I said, Steve, I really feel God designed this moment for us. And that's what he does. You see, being led by the Holy Spirit is far more simple than we make it. God used my every day, my comings, my goings, my, my here's, my there's, my successes and failures and use them for your glory, Lord. Would you redeem the bad and Lord, would you take the good and I give you praise. You see, the promptings, the checks, those gut feelings, those desires. Lord, would you see to it that I follow the leading of your spirit. You'll never follow the Holy Spirit if you don't follow his word. Get into his word because that's the part that separates soul and spirit, joint and marrow as a discerner of the thoughts, the intent of the heart, the motives, God's word. I wanna pray this over you as we close. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his Holy Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, just how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. And may you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to fully understand. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think in Jesus' name. As we continue to pray, there are those of you that, that the Holy Spirit is, is tugging at your heart. You know that you know there's an area of your life that needs attention that you've received that gut check, that you've been given a desire that you've not acted on. You've been told to do something that you've not yet responded. You know what it is. And God is saying, follow through. And when you do what he told you to do, it's so much easier to hear him when he speaks again. And there are those of you that you don't even know that you're a child of God. You may have church and religion and man-made how to be good, but you don't have God. You, you've never sensed the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit inside your soul. And I want you to be able to do that today. So. Those that follow the voice of God, the Bible says, are children of God. And so this opportunity today, if you say, Pastor Brad, I believe that Jesus, he made a way for me. He died for me. He was raised from the dead. That sin has been defeated by the cross and the resurrection. And I am ready to go all in and put my trust in the Lord today to become his child. And if that's you, would you raise your hand high, lift it up right now, just lift it up. Yes, yeah, lift it up high. Thank you, over here, over here, over here, over here. Yes, others raising their hands. Thank you, God bless you in the back. Oh, God is so good. Let us all join together and pray loud. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me sending Jesus to die for me, that I might choose life. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. 
I repent and I receive Jesus as my Savior today and forever. Would you fill me with your spirit and help me to follow your leading all the days of my life? In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's just celebrate with those that made the finest decision of their life. Thank you so much for joining us online today. If you made a decision to follow Christ, we'd love to send you a brand new Bible and a devotional guide to help you in your new journey of faith. To get these resources or to submit a prayer request, just fill out our digital communication card by texting the word Lakeshore to 94000. We'd love to celebrate what God is doing in your life and help you with your next steps. Thanks again for joining us. We hope to see you soon.